So welcome everyone. My name is Attila Kumar. I hope you uh, are having a great time and heard interesting presentations. And I hope that you are still having some energy left. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about why eSports are an enormous uh, data goldmine for us uh, data enthusiasts. The first part of my presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to share some insights into the eSport industry. And in the second part, uh, I'm going to introduce you a very interesting project we are currently working on and uh, introduce you our solution. A uh, few words about me. I work for Nextend as a data analyst BI consultant. Uh, Actually, my, as a member of uh, the BIT, my main responsibilities are uh, mostly technical development and consulting. But on the other hand, I do some pre-sales and I have an active part in system administration too, which gives me the opportunity to discover the challenges behind administering a BI platform. And a few words about Nextent Informatics. Nextent Informatics had been present for 20 years now on the Hungarian IT market. We had more than 20, uh, 200 successful projects since the beginning. Our company consists of 100 plus experts and the ownership is in 100% in Hungarian hands. The company's core business forms from mainly telecommunication and finance, but we are always looking for interesting areas where we can develop new solutions, create new values for our customers, clients, with the knowledge and expertise uh, we gathered throughout the years. This idea brought us to eSports. And I have a question for you. Uh, what do you think, what would be the first hit in Google if we type in the word law? Any clues? Oh, come on. <laughs> You're ruining the experience, come on. So yes, if you said League of Legends, then you were right. So 10 points for Gryffindor. Okay, so League of Legends will be, would be the first hit, which is a very popular online video game. So electronic video gaming has extended from being a hobby into serious sports and business. There's been an explosive growth in esports popularity over the recent years fueled by games specifically designed with the online competition in mind. Esports typically consist of a multiplayer video game created competitively with spectators, sometimes on live streams, sometimes in real venues, often by professional gamers and watched by millions each day. Because of this phenomenon, uh, several brands and media companies got an interest in esports. Oh yes. So let me show you some games about it. Uh, I think these are the most important ones these days. On the top row, we can see the so-called MOBA games, which stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. Uh, in the second row, we can see some first-person shooters. They have a very long history, actually, uh, from the 90s. If you know Doom, you know what I'm talking about. And on the uh, bottom row, we can see some sport games, real-time strategy games, and uh, online video card game. Actually, my favorite from, from this list is StarCraft II, but I'm considering myself a single-player guy. I really like uh, role-playing games, but I really love to watch eSports. So, why is eSports in, uh, important for us? Because they um, uh, generate a huma, huge amount of data. So this uh, data can be divided into two groups. Uh, the first one is the viewership data, which is important from a marketing and business perspective. Why are these streaming channels like Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Live important for us? So they provide trustworthy and instantly available viewership data. This creates an enormous uh, value for brands and media companies of, uh, in terms of advertisement or sponsoring, marketing and communication. And the live streams of the tournaments also provide sponsors the viewers' engagement level with exact number of likes, reach, follows for each game. 
but the other group is gameplay data, which is more exciting for us. Uh, whenever you play an eSport game, uh, your actions, behavior, and that of your teammates are recorded. Millions play these days uh, on a daily basis, which means also million match. And let's uh, just say one match is about a thousand draws or two thousand. It doesn't matter. If you do the math, we get a very big volume. So the sheer size of the data involved put these games per bit in other big data accumulating fields like astronomy, telecommunication, or finance. What's really good about the esports is the quality and level of details. Most of the games store your gameplay data in a very detailed fashion, which can be one minute resolution on under it. So, in my opinion, that's really good. Um, these records consist of different kinds of events, for example, your movement, your coordinates, events like killing, healing, purchasing different kind of items. If you know these games or play them, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, imagine if physical sports had the kind of detailed tracking that takes place in a digital game, it would revolutionize sports analytics. So how can we extract the data to utilize them for different kind of analytical purposes? It depends on the game. I think the best option is when a game collects the data into a database, and it can be downloaded through an API. This sounds quite good for anyone who is interested in it, but most of the game developer companies do not make their game APIs available for gaming community. I assume this will change in the next few years, but there are third-party companies who also uh, extract this kind of data, and they make their own APIs for it, and you can purchase them for a monthly price. Sometimes uh, we have replay fly, uh, files. These replay files can be videos that can be rewatched anytime and analyze them, what happened, why happened. But it can be also log files, uh, what can be parsed and loaded for some analytics. On the other hand, uh, manual collection is still present uh, these days due to this easiness. Uh, and of course, there are some special techniques like emotion detectors, machine learning, and AI, which can be a tool to extract gameplay data. For example, they cause they can use for recognize different kinds of actions, reactions with precision, or detecting entertaining bits of gameplay for commentary purposes. We have different opportunities to analyze this data. I think the most substantial area will be, or already is, machine learning. First of all, I would like to mention the game design. With machine learning, it is possible to actually tailor the game design and levels to an individual's experience, or use it to create progressional curves that tailor themselves uh, to each player according to their individual behavioral data. So that's one thing. And uh, if you look at some gaming websites, uh, there's always a news about how cheaters ruin the gaming experience. Uh, so some companies already developed some uh, solutions that detect such behavior. Twitch and YouTube also use uh, recommend content based on previous viewing information. It is, it's employed to automatically moderate chat systems to filter out inappropriate contents or uh, comments. But uh, machine learning can be applied to track players and team behaviors to identify patterns, uh, which helps team to develop competitive strategy. Using this technology in this sense is not so much about replacing human intuition uh, as augmenting it uh, with second option as a guide practice. But uh, games eSport games can make great strides providing uh, visualization and analytics during or after the matches. But in terms of actual in-game analysis of the performance or the ability to share this data and the visualizations, uh, the industry has uh, a really long way to go. Professional teams or uh, major broadcasters may have an analyst working for them, uh, dissecting matches provided detailed analysis. So I think the main aim here is to develop a solution that is flexible, tailored to non-experts, and uh, have an adaptive interfaces. So 
at next time we thought about these needs and uh, we really realized that they are not so different from any other business needs. So we talked about it and uh, that was this question. So what about modern BI tools? Can they be used for such uh, analysis? So uh, the answer is yes, as you can see. So right now I'm going to show you our solution for the mentioned needs. Actually, uh, right now, we, uh, we're developing an in-game performance analys analysis for different particular players. And we chose uh, League of Legends because some very good reasons. For example, the developer studio, Riot Games, has a mostly open API where we can extract data from very easily. And uh, it is a very good documentation. On the other hand, uh, the gameplay data are very detailed. Almost every action and movement is stored. The time resolution is around one minute, which is quite good in my opinion. And the last reason is, is the popularity. Um, it has a quite enormous fan base. I think this is the most uh, popular games these days. So there are several kinds of BI technologies on the market, but few of them are good enough for this job. Our choice was uh, ClickSense. How much of you know ClickSense or any other BI tools? OK, so there are some people. That's cool. So uh, the reasons are very simple. Uh, the associative engine behind it is one of the fastest on the market. And with the in-memory capabilities, you only have to extract the data only once. So you can make a selection or filter in the analy analysis. The calculation will happen in a moment. And I have a slogan when it comes to data analysis. Every analytics saw is a well-prepared data model. This technology has a very good developer-friendly data load editor uh, where we can assemble the required data model by extracting uh, different kinds of data through connectors, transform them without the needs of any other preparation. The third point is the dynamic visualization layer, uh, which means every diagram and object is linked to one another. So if you make a selection uh, of the visualization, if you make a selection on a visualization, the others will change too. So how does it work? Uh, the Riot Games API can give us a lot of uh, data about the player themselves. For example, their level, which region they play in it, uh, what champions they play when they played it last time, how they mastered them, etc. But we can also extract some static data, for example, the stats of the champion, uh, the item stats, for example, attack, defense, and all things like it. But the most interesting ones are the match data. The match data can be divided into two groups. The first one actually is the match summary data, and the second one is the timeline data, where every event uh, mostly stored, for example, uh, item purchase, killing, who killed who, what was the healing, and things like it. And uh, we had some uh, problems with the Riot Games API, it has a very strict limitation. So 20 requests every one second and 100 requests every two minutes can be made. So if you want to gather a bigger amount of data, we will run out of requests. The second one is that sometimes the developers change uh, the request URLs. Yes, yeah, so uh, Click has many data connectors for this job, but we used a parameterized uh, REST connector. Every request is a different data connector, which consists the API key and the URL. So if Riot Games change the request, you have to modify the specific data connections. We extracted the mesh, the mesh data, and the next step is to bring it to a, uh, for a good data model that helps us with the data discovery and the visualizations. And of course, the last step is to make good-looking and flexible visualization layer where uh, we can look, about, look at all the stats and key performance indicators. And with the help of a commentator, we can use the patterns and looking for interesting insights. So right now, I'm going to show you this application. This application is in a prototype uh, status, so it's not finished yet. We are still developing it. But first of all, I would like to have a question to the, a member of the audience, is if it's still OK for him to analyze his last mesh data. Is it OK, Mark? Thanks. 
So uh, let's look at, uh, not on that. Okay, so I'm just refreshing the, this ClickSense application. Okay, so right now you can see nothing, but it's reloading now. Okay, okay, first of all, I would like to uh, reload all the data. Uh, this large match data application is for commentators after match, so they can make uh, quick data discoveries. On the, on the screen, you can see the uh, so-called data load editor where we can assemble the data model. And on the right side, you can see the different kind of REST connectors. So I'm going to reload the data. Okay, and the data model is already assembled through the data load editor. So right now, let's look at the sheets and the visualizations. On the first sheet, we can see some very pretty basic information. For example, when was the match start time, uh, how long was it, the uh, mode or the match type. On the next sheet, there we, can, we can see some pretty basic information too which uh, also appear after the game, something similar. So we can see the summoner's name, high wizard shadow, the champion, the champ level, or also what was his killing death assist, and uh, champion damage and the ETCs. Of course, on this uh, sheet, we can see some items. These items can win uh, your match. It depends on what you bought through the game. This is pretty basic, actually, but after it, uh, we can see some very important key PIs. The keys, the golden, the champion image. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, ClickSense has a very good data visualization layer. So for example, if I want to analyze only the winning team, I only have to click on this slide, and all the other uh, slides, uh, data visualization will change too. So let's go back. I look at other interesting things. For example, yeah, the XP. So right now we can see all the players' XP, how they uh, change through the match. But uh, what's really handy for the uh, commentator is that to compare different ki kind of players, for example. So right now we can see that uh, the XP was quite the same, but if you if you look at the creep score, which means uh, the creep score is about the minions you summon, and they damage the other players. So and on the right side, we can see these two players' timestamps. For example, yeah, we can see that in the 14 minutes, there was a jump, and we can see that where they were. OK. And right now, we can see the current gold and total gold. Uh, in this game, the gold is a very uh, important resource. For example, you can buy, some, purchase some items to win or lose the game. And uh, yep, of course, we can see here some different uh, different stats: the gold difference between the two teams, uh, the XP difference. Uh, we can uh, filter them down in terms of uh, players. But my favorite type of uh, visualizations is actually this one and the next one. Uh, yes. So here right now we can see the different kinds of damage. For example, uh, Wizard Shadow, our player here, was, is more of a magic uh, damage guy instead of a physical damage. But if you look at the total heal, where are you? Yeah, you are in the middle lane, actually. And we can see that uh, here, the longest time spent living. So with a good commentator, he can make a lot of discoveries through this analysis. And of course, we can see the uh, most important events. For example, uh, there is a really important event, the Allied Monster Kill, which gives, us, uh, gives a player a buff for example, he will earn much more gold. And it, it can change the way of the match. And the last one, the last uh, visualization, my favorite one, I think, I think, and I think uh, this will be really handy for a commentator. We can see uh, that the player, the players what both. For example, uh, let's look at an item. For example, 
can you help me with something? For example, an item. Can you say an item for me? What did you buy last night? No, okay. It doesn't matter. I really have to show you the power of the gray in click sense. So if we choose this player, we can also see here what kind of uh, items he bought with the colors. For example, uh, we can see the white colors. Uh, this is possible um, selections, and we can see some dark gray selections. So uh, the player doesn't bought this one. And we can uh, compare different kind of players. So it can be really helpful and useful for a commentator. So, uh, to conclude my presentation. Uh, the sport is explosively growing business area with huge opportunities for us data enthusiasts. The data, the data that generated from the gameplay is satisfactory for uh, machine learning and predictive algorithms. These technologies are going to blow our minds, literally, and with, it will change the face of the modern competitions. And I hope you liked my presentations. And if you have some uh, questions, ask. But before that, I would like to say thanks to my good colleague Sabolc with the help of developing this application. So thank you for your kind attention. So thank you very much. OK, uh, does anybody have any questions? You're right there for the first one. The answer is yes. Uh, actually, uh, we are developing this uh, project for eSport, LTD. Uh, uh, the most, I think the biggest uh, Hungarian eSport uh, leadership or company, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have some leg legal issues with that, but uh, I think, <laughs> no, actually, uh, Riot Games and uh, Esports LTD have a really good relationship, and they already spoke about it. And uh, it's actually for commentary purposes, so they don't want to sell it to anyone. I just mentioned that with these kinds of data, we can uh, analyze patterns or identify them. Yes, actually, that's an extension from Click Branch. Uh, what was the name of it? Uh, let me just remember it. Scatterpad. Yeah, Scatterpad with a bl uh, background. We all, uh, we have to develop uh, or upgrade this kind of uh, visualization because the map behind it is hard coded. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. Yep, you're right. Of course, uh, there's another application, which is about, I think, the last 20 matches data. And uh, as I mentioned, we, there's a very strict limitation here. So we have to, uh, yeah, because of the API. So we we are having some conversation with the Riot Games to give us some better API key with unlimited access because we hungers for data. Any, Any other questions? questions? OK, uh, I've got one. Um, sure, Daniel. Yeah, uh, what uh, do you think um, 
can uh, maybe League of Legend, League of Legends, uh, not only the players but also the the uh, the game developers use your technique to uh, develop the game, to develop the experience, how they uh, they can play uh, with uh, with the number of users or something. Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> maybe I if they like it, maybe. Fair enough. All right, uh, so one more big applause for my friend Attila. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, this was uh, the last uh, presentation in this room. Uh, if you are fast enough, then you can reach uh, the last one uh, in the other one. Uh, but uh, I hope that uh, you liked this day. And uh, if you have some more minutes, Maybe you can catch the game outside with the big cubes and you can play and maybe win the tablet. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today. And uh, first of all, thank you for all of our sponsors, uh, Click, Balabit, uh, uh, Crossover, Ifua, Horvat and Partners, and of course, Nextend. And um, I really hope that you liked uh, today and all the presentations. And um, if you have any questions uh, regarding uh, BDU or any of the other uh, presenters, then please feel free to ask anybody right here, right now. And um, meet you uh, at the Nash Hall uh, to the uh, final presentation and for the, uh, for the games uh, uh, winners. So thank you very much.